guys so today we're going to install a remote to 3 to a roger um edge one bolt um and show you where it connects we're going to keep it tucked in here inside the case and join it to the customer's wi-fi um what's important to remember is you can use it on either uh wi-fi bluetooth or via the internet so plenty of options um in order to keep using your gates um basically customers had the Roger um, key fobs and just pretty notorious for any key fob these days you keep them in your pockets you sit on them you break them they run out of battery um, and they're about 40 pounds each to replace by the time you replace two or three of them you could have bought a remoteo had it fitted and you'll never have a replacement key ever again now the other benefit is that they're much more secure um, using the remoteo than it is using um, remote uh, RF controls Right, so in your box, you're gonna get the Remoteo free device. You're gonna get the instructions. So if you unfold the pack in, you can see your instruction manuals of how to actually set this up. You can go to the Remoteo website to the compatibility page um, and check your um, check that your motor's compatible. Um, however, what I will say here is Diagram 2.2 shows you what you're basically looking for is the push command and common um, and all you're doing is linking these two bits together. If you put a wire between the push button and common terminal on your gate opener or garage door, that will trigger the gate. And so long as you have a terminal that allows you to enter a push button, a remoteo will work with the device, okay? What we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna use the uh, power cable that comes with it. You've got some options. You've got this power cable here with the USB lead on. If you've got USB power or a plug socket with a USB in here, it's really simple just to plug that in and plug that into your remoteo. But what we're gonna do on this one, we're gonna chop the USB lead off because all you've got inside that is a um, live and a neutral. And then we're gonna connect that to the board to the 24 volt power supply from the board. We've then got the trigger wire, which we're gonna connect to the um, push button and common terminal and what we're also going to do on the Roger um, gate boards a lot of them have it they have a, a terminal which acts as a gate sensor so you can link the COR, uh, COR terminal on the board I'll show you that on the Roger is down here and we can program this terminal so when the gate is anything but fully closed it will break the circuit or make the circuit and then what we can do is we can program that into the remoteo and that will tell you if the gate is open or closed so what we've done now we've cut the um sensor wires in half uh stripped the ends off and we're going to connect them up now pull them through to just outside so you've got a better um better range on your wi-fi connection um so far we've spent about two minutes um just getting things ready pulling them through um and stripping the ends off so we've got a few more minutes to go and we should have this connected and working Right, so we've pulled the cables through. Um, we've now got them inside the motor. We've got the two signal wires and the power wire. Um, we're gonna connect these up now. What you're gonna look for is on the Roger panel here, you've got a 24 volt terminal uh, and a common terminal. That's your, your basically your live and your neutral, that's what you want. Um, so your red cable into 24, your black cable into common. That's gonna give you your power to your power lead which you're going to power your uh, remote over from and then you've got your two signals we're going to go into both terminals of the cor and then we're going to go into uh, the terminals up here you've got common and pp on the roger um, this is what's going to trigger your start stop and close button you do have the option if you're going to use both um, relays on your remote you can wire one to common and ap and then you can run the other from common and CH. That will give you the ability to open and close the gate. What we're doing with this one, because the customer wants to control a garage door as well, we're gonna have one control in the gate and the other relay to control the garage door. And we'll show you how to do that in the setup. All right, so probably a couple of minutes longer than we would normally have done it, but um, with this one, we're feraling all of the terminations when we put them in um, you don't have to do that but if you're working with this which is cat 5 um, external this is solid core cable so if you if it's been clamped in for quite a long time what you'll probably find if you undo that chances are you'll probably break the cable so you might have to restrip them 
make sure you've got enough slack to re-put them in. So what I've just done with this is because we've got the stranded cable and about three or four cores already in the terminal, we've stripped them back, um, re-twisted them all together, put them in a ferrule, so then that way when that clamp's in and out, it doesn't break the cable itself, doesn't break off the, um, the cables that we all push together. <laughs> Um, just means a little bit more reliability for the customer um, uh, and in this instance obviously we're charging to fit this for someone so what we don't want to be doing is we don't want to be getting called back saying that the gate doesn't work later so making sure the connections are, uh, are nice and uh, connected well with the ferrules makes a big difference with nothing to come back at another time right so now you've got your remote device you've took the case off what you've now got is your power terminal in the middle you've got your input one input two output one and output two and what you're going to do on this you can you can control all of these outputs in the settings to decide which ones you want to do what and what inputs you want to listen to as well so what we're going to do here we're going to use output one and we're going to put that to the trigger terminals so this cable here the common and pp doesn't matter which way round you uh, wire it because you're just going to loop the two pins together um, they are going to be connected to output one so when we trigger output one on the relay, that connects these two pins and then the gates open. And then what we're gonna do down here on input one is we're gonna connect the gate status um, terminal to the two pins um, ENF, so input one. And when the gate is anything but fully closed, these two pins connect, which then um, closes here. And that lets your remote tell you that your gate is open or closed. So I'm just gonna do that now very quickly. Right, so now you've got your cables connected, your trigger wire is an output, your power connector is now in, and your input is there. Um, what I will point out to you there is that that fuse in the middle is a one amp fuse. Um, if you over voltage um, your unit, you will blow that fuse, um, but that fuse blows, protects the rest of your unit from fall, but we do sell replacement fuses. So if you do need a replacement fuse for your remote EO, please just e uh, email us at info at charge.services. Uh, if you've registered your remote EO free warranty with us, we'll already have your details. Um, but yeah, literally just send us your purchase information and we can send you out a new fuse. Um, but what we now connected to is the common PP. Um, you could connect this, like I said, to either the open or close commands um, or uh, the open and pedestrian command kind of depends whatever you want to do with it um, it's a really simple function of it will just close for the connection between the common and any of the pins that you want to put it into so it's a simple relay but if you want to use things like the Alexa commands so you want to use um, Alexa open the gate for instance you would need to use one remote for each device or each gate so you can connect the common to the open it will then ask you for a password in order to open your remoteo um, and then if you connect the common and closed when you say remoteo closer gates it will trigger your closed um, command which doesn't ask you for a password um, and therefore it doesn't confuse the two um, but obviously if you've just got it in the pp command um, alexa open the gate will trigger the open and close so you, it will ask you for a password every time to trigger it um, providing you've got a gate status as well so if you've got a gate status, it will work because it will tell whether the, the gate is open or closed and it will only ask you a password if the status of the gate is closed. So you can do it that way. Um, then you can still use your other, um, your other button for another function. Right, but any other questions, please send us an email, info at charge.services. Right, so showing you the um, configuration for the gate sensor. So different gates will have um, different options. You find a lot of gates will have the ability to have a terminal in them that will tell you whether the gate is not fully closed. So basically on a sliding gate, it will have a sensor um, on the gate motor itself that tells you that it's in a fully closed position. And there's usually a terminal on the board, uh, just like this one, which is either programmable or it's either normally open or normally closed if the gate is open or closed. In this instance, a lot of them also can be a, what do you call a free relay. So this one allows you to put 230 volts AC through it to connect to courtesy light. And what we do is we set the uh, panel to turn the courtesy light on for the duration of the maneuver, which means the connection is closed 
all of the time that the gate is open. When the gate is closed, the courtesy light would have turned off. So that then breaks the connection when the gate is fully closed. So we link that to the remoteo. We go to the gate status sensor. We've put it on, we've flipped the logic because we're not normally closed. We're normally open when the gate is closed. And then now when you go back to the gate control, you can see that the drive gates are currently closed. When I press that button, the moment the gates become open, the um, sensor states open, the gate will open. It's a fairly slow set of gates because it's in someone's garden, so for safety, so I'll skip the video ever so slightly. But uh, the gates are now almost fully open. All right, so the gates are fully open. The sensor remains in the open position until you then close the gates. And as you can see, just as the gates actually come to the fully closed position, the terminal changes over. Now the gates are fully closed and you can set up notifications to immediately alert you if the gates are opened or closed and that will happen whether you're using the Remoteo app or not so if somebody uses a remote fob to open the gate you will be sent a notification telling telling you that the gate has been opened so the next steps for this is going to be pairing it to the customer's internet because currently it's connecting directly from phone to device using the um, bluetooth we can go into settings scroll down to the bottom we go network setup, add it onto Wi-Fi first. I'm going to scan for the customer's Wi-Fi and it'll obviously pick up all of the Wi-Fi's that are in range. So various ones on there. What I'm going to do now is I'm obviously going to select the right network, put the password in and get it paired. So now that we've done that, as part of the step when you connect to Wi-Fi is do you want to enable easy connect in order to have it on the internet connection? We've done that now as well. Your next steps here, if you want to enable Alexa and Google Home, you click here, you log in to either your Alexa or Google Home account and you add the device. Um, Remoteo, uh, unlike most other gate or smart gate openers, pretty much every single one we've ever seen, um, this actually has its own smart API. So if you want to integrate it into Home Assistant or any other um, smart home stuff that you're working on, if you're a nerd like us and you love doing this sort of thing, you can use the WebSocket API um, and you can basically program any of your home smart home stuff to, uh, to use it as well. Um, you've got the ability to do software updates on the device to bring it up to any latest updates. One of the updates you'll see in one of our other videos is the new features, being able to hold your gate open by uh, pushing and locking the relay in. This was done um, via Smart App Update uh, and the software update on here. Um, so it's really, really good product in, it in terms of its, its future proof um, anything you want to do with remoteo you've got to be able to do it and when they bring out new features it's as simple as updating the software um, updating your app and updating the software remotely over wi-fi or bluetooth to your device uh, and that's how you do it so this remoteo is now installed your other options you've now got are sharing new keys uh, which is really really simple you just need to follow the steps um, we'll do another video uh, to keep this one shorter about how you share your keys with other people.